They're both important to staying healthy in the workforce. So we're discussing the combination of primary care and occupational health. Our guest, Kyle Summers, a family nurse practitioner working in occupational health for Woodlawn Hospital. This is Woodlawn Health Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us. I'm Joey Waller. Hi there, Kyle. Thanks for being with us. Hey, thank you for having me today. Great to have you aboard. So first, just remind us to get us started, if you would, please. What do we mean by primary care? Well, with primary care, that's a basic health care approach for family members of all ages to address acute or chronic health care needs. And so we're talking about basic checkups and things that go along with that, right? Absolutely. And so what would some of those things include? So yearly wellness checks, depending on age and whatnot, basic labs to look at cholesterol, kidney, liver, thyroid, blood sugars, make sure those levels are all within parameter, school checkups for children, sports physicals for our young athletes, and then it leads into acute visits. I mean, does somebody have the flu or do they have an upper respiratory infection and we're checking for strep throat? And even goes into if we're actually managing chronic disease such as diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, arthritis, those kinds of things. Gotcha. And so what is occupational health? It may be a new term to some. Oh, absolutely. What's interesting is that globally, 70% have access to primary care, but only 15% of people have access to occupational health care. Occupational health care can have the same focus as primary, but you approach it differently. It's a service that comes to you through your employer, and we're looking at OSHA compliance, injury prevention, timely response to work-related injury, prevention of repetitive work-related injuries. So when we talk, Kyle, about combining primary care and occupational health care, We'll get into some details in a moment, but to set us up, what would you say the overall goal should be? I think the overall goal is the health of employees and supporting businesses in the community so that you have a healthier community all the way around. If you can get an employer to invest in an occupational health contract, it helps them invest in the health care of their employees and potentially their family members. And so how would an occupational health contract differ from providing basic health insurance? So the occupational health portion of it, we offer pre-employment physicals to ensure that the people you're hiring are healthy to do what you need them to do. Are they the right person to repetitively lift 50 pounds 100 times a day? You can look at drug screens, audiometry, so you make sure that people have their OSHA compliance, spirometry screening, should they be wearing a mask or a ventilator, first aid training, do they know how to take care of each other should an injury happen on site until we get an employee to a healthcare professional, CPR. We can also come in and do health screenings to screen cholesterol and diabetes to start the conversations to let somebody know they may have a problem they're not aware of. And you led me beautifully with that last part into my next question. When you talk about they may have a problem they're not aware of, you mentioned a moment ago, one option there is a physical for people that haven't yet been hired. To use your example, if someone on the job needs to lift a certain amount, they may think they're capable, but a physical might show otherwise and reveal something they weren't aware of, right? Absolutely. And so then that protects the employer, but it also protects the employee. And we can have the conversation, you know, this person may be better suited for job A versus job B. Gotcha. So when you visit a workplace, what do you observe typically and how do you make recommendations? So when you're looking around, you're looking to see if people are working with proper ergonomics and proper alignment, or are they in a position that is going to set them up for injury based on a far reach having to be accomplished repetitively throughout the day. 
that's a first example right there. We can work with employers if they do find that they're having a repetitive injury over and over again. We can have physical therapy come in and talk about maybe some realignment for the job. Do we need to put a platform on the floor? How can we make this repetitive action safer? And speaking of which, when you make these observations and you see things that can be added or changed, what would be one example, if you would, of a common thing that you point out that an employer needs and doesn't have and says, wow, I'm glad you mentioned that? Proper lift technique and ergonomics for people that are making repetitive motions. Are they using good lift technique? Are they lifting with their legs instead of their back? Where are they repetitively putting the strain on their body? How can we tell them how to move their body to protect themselves? So the ideal scenario here would be that both employees and employers benefit, of course. First, how would you say employees benefit from occupational health care? So employees, if the employer offers a health occupational health care component or contract like Woodlawn Health does, that's something that they can extend to the employee's family members. So employees see that their employer isn't investing in them. They have access to health care should they have the common cold or the upper respiratory, get treatment quicker, get back to work quicker. We're evaluating to prevent the injuries so they're missing less days. That helps on both ends. Another thing that I found is if somebody has a workman comp injury, but they know me from the primary care aspect where they've come in for an upper respiratory, they feel more comfortable in their care they're getting. I'm not suddenly, quote unquote, the corporate physician. I'm somebody that knows them, but that's also treating them. The bottom line is people don't care what you know until they know that you care. So if we can bridge that gap and help them, they just know that we're invested in them, their employers invested in them, and that's how they benefit. Yeah, I'm sure that provides not just better health care, but a comfort level that's increased as well, right? Absolutely. And how about what's in it for employers? So for employers, if they have this type of contract that Woodlawn is offering to the community for an occupational contract with primary care in come like combined, then your employees stay healthier because they're getting care faster. We're doing healthcare screenings. So they find out about chronic diseases before they become problematic. It also helps the majority of their claims and visit run through the contract, which reduces the number of claims that's hitting their primary insurance. Let's use Blue Cross Blue Shield for an example. If you have less claims hitting Blue Cross Blue Shield, then your overall premiums are down. So you now have a cost savings that you can put back into your business. And I'm sure that is something that any employer would sign up for. How about with so much focus these days, Kyle, on mental health? Is that included here? So mental health does start in primary care. And I would say that that is a significant portion of visits that I see because stress, anxiety, the emotional burden of chronic disease, the emotional burden of a workman's comp injury. So yes, we can address those needs as well. That doesn't mean to say that we wouldn't want to bring on mental health professionals, but we can start at the basic level and work to help people. I would imagine there are companies interested in taking better care of workers health-wise, but they just need more guidance from an expert like you, right? I appreciate that. But yes, absolutely. Everybody needs guidance. And sometimes you just don't know all of what a community offers until you hear about it. A couple of other things. Occupational health care seems to be kind of a unique niche. How did you end up working in it? So with wanting to advance my education, I stepped into primary care and it happened at that time to be one of those internal contracts where an employer was partnering primary and occupational. So I will be honest that I just fell into a unique spot and I appreciated the value and the relationships that I was making. So I continued to move forward in that direction. And what would you say is the key to an employer providing better occupational health care for its staff? I fall back on a quote that I heard a while ago that says, medicine adds days to life, but occupational medicine 
adds life to your days. And if you can get employees that feel that you're invested in them, they're invested in you and it creates a great working cycle. Yeah, really just the perfect win-win. In summary, how does an occupational health partnership with Woodlawn Hospital first occur? If a business is interested, what's the first step? They can reach out and give a call over to Woodlawn Health. They can ask for the occupational health department, and it starts a conversation with our staff here, inquiring in regards to their basic needs, and we move forward from there. Sounds quick and easy. Well, folks, we trust you're now more familiar with occupational health care. Kyle Summers, very interesting indeed. Thanks so much again. Thank you. And for more information, please visit woodlawnhospital.org forward slash staff forward slash occupational hyphen health. Now, if you found this podcast helpful, please share it on your social media. I'm Joey Waller. And thanks again for listening to Woodlawn Health Doc Talk.